I have shown you in previous videos how you can export data from Power BI to CSV, Excel um, using Power Automate. We have filtered the data using Power BI filters. We have uh, you know, fixed the API limits. We've done a ton of stuff. So check Curable Learning Portal to find all the export videos and all the details about it. But one thing I haven't showed you is what happens if you have, for example, let's go to Northwim. So here in Northwind, we have a bunch of categories for the products that we have on the data set, and we have one for beverage, condiments. So what if we want to download sales data for each category on a separate file and print to SharePoint? I have not shown you how to do that, and that's how we're going to do it. In this video, we're going to do it with a number. In the next video, we're going to do it when the filter is text. And in the third video, I'm going to show you how to actually put it in separate folders in case different people need different access. Okay, so let's start with today's video. Right, so this is what we're going to do, the folder that we're going to apply. We're going to create a this table that has year, month, category ID, date, and sales. The dates, you can skip it if you just want to have year, month. Um, and what we're going to do is to create a Power BI loop that will go through category ID 1, create the table, export it, category ID 2, create the table, export it, and so on and so forth. So how do you do that in Power Automate? Let me show you. So you go to New Flow, Schedule Cloud Flow, and then give it a name. Make sure that you give them a proper name, not what I'm doing now, because when you have a lot of... Um, Power Automate flows, it, it just gets difficult to find them. So what we've said now is that run once a month. You can do it once a week, once a, yeah. And what we are going to do now is we're going to create a variable that stores, in, in, initialize a variable that stores the IDs that we want to loop. So this is going to be, you could actually hard-coded or you could get it from an Excel file or you can get it from wherever. You can actually get it from Power BI itself. But in this case, there are so few that let's not complicate things. So category ID. This is going to be, as I said, this video a number. So we're going to do category ID 1. And then we're going to get just the first two. So we don't have a lot of download files everywhere. So next step, we're going to loop. If you remember, we have to go do the export for category one, for category two, so we're going to do a do until, um, until step, there we have it, where category ID, and then it's, here's where you say where it stop. I'm going to stop, if I put three, it stops at two. We have eight, so we would have to stop at nine, but you will see when you run it. So add an action, and here we're going to do run a query against the data set. And I have a ton of videos that go into exquisite detail about how this is done. One is here, otherwise Curable Learner Portal, and you'll find all the videos there or the playlist, either way works. Um, I'll show you a little bit, but for the detail or, you know, what if and all that stuff, you need to go to those videos. I have published a Northwind report on Power BI service, that's why I can pick it from here. And the data set is going to be this 2021 uh, Northwind. And the query is kind of the query that I show you in Power BI. This query, but it has a little bit more meat. And again, you need to actually check the um, list to see exactly how that is created because I, I show you how to do it. So we're just going to copy that. So here you have it defined. This is a variable for the sales and then we're going to just get the top 10. We don't want to have everything and order by sales descending. Okay. The next step is to create the CSV. Create a CSV table. And it's going to be from the um, rows of the previous step. And then we're going to go to SharePoint. And then we're going to create a file. Create file. And here we're going to put, go to the folder in SharePoint where you want to store it. That's not the one. This one. 
vaccine tracker. I always put everything in there. And then I have another folder in there. Just a second. In there, I have downloads folder. Perfect. Here, name of the file. Now, I, I'm going to put category ID underscore, and then I'm going to put the timestamp UTC now. Dot CSV. Don't forget to put the file extension, otherwise it will show us a blank file even though it's a CSV. Okay. And then the content is the going to be the output of the previous step, which is create CSV table. So now that we have the SharePoint file created, we need to add one more thing. For this thing to loop, this is how it works. So you initialize the variable, it says category ID one. It comes in here, blah, 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 blah. And then we need to add one. So when it goes up to the loop, category ID is not one again, it's two. So we're going to add an action. If you forget this, it will run forever. And you don't want that. So increment variable. It's called increment variable. And then uh, the variable that we want to increment is category ID. In case you have more, you can choose it. And then we're going to increment it by one. Once you have done that, you save and you run. And hopefully that will work. Let's see. So it's running. You need to make sure that number one, this has run completely. And here, it might happen that it takes a while for the files to drop in, especially your files are big. So be patient. Just if you see one file and what is number two, it'll come. So here we have number one and number two. Perfect. And if we opened it, one should say only category ID one, the other one should say only category ID two. So on the next video, I'm going to show you, okay, what if instead of doing category ID, we want to use category name? How did you do it? Because you do it slightly different, but kind of the same. But I'll show you in a different video.